Right, uh, we and Ben are here today to discuss um, what is happening in Celtic this week and obviously a big game on Sunday. We could potentially um, be champions on Sat- aye, Saturday. Um, but first, aye, let's talk about what I were talking about here, Ben. His name, I'm not going to pronounce his second name. Um, he's, let's, just, let's just call him Mahaned, do you know what I mean? Let's just call him that. Um, he plays for um, Ham Ham Arbery Football. Don't know where that is. I've heard of them. No. Uh, they are in the what country is it? Swedish. Don't know. Sweden. That. No, I didn't. Don't no. About it. Stockholm. So there you go. Um, that's where that guy's from. He's twenty five. He is a left back. Um, and he plays for the Iraq national team. More likely, he's going to be, um, you know, a left Taylor. A left Taylor. I don't want to say that. A Greg Taylor. Play, you know, kind of. Yeah. Repl- sort of a uh, backup. Yeah, aye. Uh, he's, as I say, he's 25. Um, a lot of people are on him. He's also looking at Celtic in a Champions League thing next season. Yeah. Um, would you take him, Ben? There's not much about him, really. Now he's, he's played. Um, in fact, he was in. Um, Celtic had representation in the stands during one of their games and a goal was draw with Malmo on Monday. Um, so there is. You know, there's truth about this, but we need to see. Um, you know, we've not heard any, and you know, official, you know, bids or interest. So, uh, are you excited about this, Ben? Is this the first kind of sort of transfer window um, we're getting to here now? Um, well, I, I, I I've not ever watched them much. Um, Aye. I've never even heard them before they even came on this. So yep. uh, <laughs> I've not seen much of him. I don't even know if he's a good player or not. So uh, hopefully he's decent. Uh, well, I'm not too. Sure, why we're signing another left back because we've got like your Liam Scales and all of that, yep. and uh, Adam Montgomery as well. I think he's a left back, so yeah. we'll bring him back from loan, and you know, it makes sense. But if you think he's going to make an improvement to the team, then why not? Just buy him, yeah. Um, that deal with Celtic were to get it, it's worth about 1.6 million, uh, with the player's contract expiring next uh, year. So there is interest there, but we've not heard any further news in that, um, sort of bit. But I want to talk about. We came out today, Ben. That um, the pre-season fixtures have come out. So Celtic will travel to Austria um, this summer for the pre-season training camp. After obviously COVID, they couldn't go anywhere the like, past two summers. As I say, part of the last season we travelled to Wales, and but this time we can go back to sort of normality as such. As you see Celtic go back there for the second time, um, confirmed Scottish champions, um, and then after they come back, they will play. Blackburn Rovers and Norwich City. Uh, they they are being formed at the three yeah. matches at Park Keed. Uh, um, obviously Norwich City being done at the Championship, they've been relegated. In that, Benny, thoughts on that? I don't think there's much on it. Um, but you uh, just, it's just it's probably just this stretch of legs. It's just before the season, and it's, yeah. they're not massive Premier League teams. Well, Norwich well this season, but they're not even at that. They're yeah. not a massive team. They're kind of up and down, but yeah, it's it's just good to get the legs stretched. To be fair. Yeah, and as you say, Ben, they're obviously the best Premier League side in the world. But it's good to get you know a good op- you know experience for maybe young players after since it's pre season get a couple. Of, um, as you say, Ben, just get your legs back and all that and see what it's like. But those games will take place. Norwich game will take place on Saturday, twenty third of July. Um, and it's good that the season tickets are like they're they're normal like that. But obviously due to COVID, it wasn't so. They're included, so you'll be able to see if you want to go and see Norwich um, and Blackburn. You can. Um, the first game is Blackburn, sixteenth uh, of July, and then obviously Norwich on the twenty third. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that's pre-season. I think it's great to see. I think it's good to see Celtic going to Austria because I like that. I like that when they did that. Yeah. Was it under Brendan Rodgers? I think they did it. Um, I thought it was a show. Aye, they're going for ten days anyway. Um, the first week of July, and they. <laughs> And they those fixtures will be announced soon, but you'd imagine it's obviously like so. Who, who, who plays in Austria? Like Austria, Vienna, and all that. Yeah, the v, right with Vienna. Yeah, uh, Vienna. Uh, Red Bull Salzburg. Yep. Um, uh, I know of another one, but I can't put my the name there. If you know what. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Aye. Aye. That's, that's all I can. Do. That's all I really know. Aye. I, I I can just imagine if Celtic got Blackburn and Norwich away. I mean, the the stadium would just be filled with Celtic fans. I mean, I, yeah. I can remember Sunderland, the Daffabet, was it the Daffabet Cup or something like that? That was brilliant. Well, <laughs> yeah, I was in uh, Sunderland till I die, I'm sure. Yeah, I, um, I think we bet them in the Orange. 
Aye. I think it's good that, you know, Celtic are on the, the pre season stuff again and you can go and see them if you want. Austria's um is out there as well. But aye, that's pre season stuff. Um but I on to the kinda news we were talking about in the podcast which was two hours, Ben, and the up to date right now it's been about seventy views already. I mean that's <laughs> Is that the highest viewed one then? It's probably yep. Yeah, it's, well, I've checked it sure, but I'm pretty sure that's the highest. So, fair play to the bottle. Just come for the banter, don't they? Yep. Banter than the bottle. Half of people on this podcast, like the channel, just like going by bottle now because of you, Ben. It's just <laughs> they'll have an addiction now. Seven hundred people. <laughs> Aye. Uh, so we're talking about yesterday, Ben, in the podcast about Ryan Christie, and obviously uh, when he got promoted last night, so it will get. Two million, uh, a two million will windfall. Uh, I thanks. Think one million. One million after they get promoted, and then well, I think one million if they stay up. Yeah. It's like a survival clause. Yeah. Like I had a clause in the contract. Yeah. Right? Um, the contract. Uh, obviously Celtic parted away in the twenty-six year old in September. Um, I wasn't surprised when he went to Bournemouth. To be fair, you know, it's they're pushing for promotion, but he does join the likes of in the Premier League, who's the Scots like Andy Robertson, Kieran Tierney, John McGinn, Shea Adams, and Scott McTominay, and expanding, well. yeah, and expand the the Scottish uh, connection down south. So, aye, good fair play to Ryan Christie, you know what, and um, good luck to him in the Prem. I don't. He kind of does remind me of Shea Armstrong a bit. Yeah, he was a player who was, I mean, I think Shea Armstrong was a lot better than Christie was to be fair. But Christie had these moments where he was really good. Yeah. Um, but uh, you don't know. He could become just one of those. Like, Decent players for Bournemouth. I think he already is just now. But also as well, David Brooks came back from his. Uh, he, he was. I think he recovered from his cancer. So ah, that's good. Yeah, it's a. No, that is good. But it's a. It's a thing with uh, Ryan Christie now. I think yeah, they play him at right wing. So he's going to need to be on his top form if he wants to keep his position. Aye. Um, and we'll see how that goes in the Premier League next season. But I seen that Bayern Munich kit, Ben. I know it's kind of off topic, but that oh, cat is. Man. <laughs> ah, it's beautiful. It is. I hope. I, I'll definitely be getting that. I'm a kit collector. Yeah. I've got. I've got my favourite top. is like you have know, one. I'm still at it right now. Yeah. Um. And like, if Adidas do some like do like as good as we buy Munich. I mean, we Celtic. Oh, come on. It's gonna. Hopefully, it's good. I've it's seen leaks. Um. I've seen leaks with collars. Like most kits are getting collars with Adidas. Mm-hmm. Um. What would you like? That would you like a call a kit with a collar, Ben, or? Uh, well, the Celtic kits I've got on my wall, both of them have got calls, and the, I mean, they're both Umbro ones, but that, yeah. it makes it look a lot nicer. But, yeah. yeah. Obviously, the last time we had a caller was uh, New Balance. It was alright. I mean, they kind of broke the hoops at the top, which is a big split decision, but, you know, it was the last time we had that. Um, but looking forward to the kits releases. Um, they will be soon. Was, obviously, the big clubs get theirs out. Liverpool had theirs out. I, did, I don't know about Liverpool. Um, the bland, it's just a just red. I know, I, don't it's... Know, I don't know how to feel about it, but then again, that's that's what you really need, isn't it? That's it, because you don't want to go overboard. Older kits. Uh, you don't want to go overboard, you look at a lot of the older kits, it's just red. That's it, aye. Um, and we'll... In my, sorry, in my aye, opinion, well. see, when you look at a lot of the older kits, I'm not making something that stupid, but what, from Kenny Dalglish's sort of mm. thing, and it was just a badge and that was it. Aye. No sponsor, no name in the back, I think that's slitting Ace's kits. Aye, ah. Uh, Jolts as well. I don't mind that, you know, it's um, something of it. Um, I was thinking about that, I don't know if it's true or not, but see um, some of the kits we're seeing leaking, and there's some obviously just concepts, but I seen one that was like, um, what was it, was it gold maybe the badge or something like that? I don't know. There was a lot gold. of the concepts are usually a lot nicer than Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully Adidas don't go too plain, I like, you know, something good out there, but... We'll see how it goes. I like the train. The train stuff being really good hit with Adidas. Um, mm-hmm. and also I've got a couple of stuff from last season with the, the, the white training. Ah, that was good. I liked that. I liked that, yeah. Yeah, it's probably the best word we've had for years or some of the train stuff. But I, mm. um, to back to, well, to wrap up Mohammed, how's he, I don't even know how to spell his say, say his sitting name. We'll just call him Mohammed again, right? Okay. <laughs> um, do you think maybe if it is true and interest, Ben, that the Champions League next season might have a fuller say in what we go in this summer, not just Mohamed, Mohamed, but you know all our players. Well, I, I, 
I'm not hundred percent sure if we can go the distance in the Champions League because yeah. when you look at the teams we're up against, it's like PSG, Man City, yeah. Bayern Munich, Liverpool. But I genuinely think we've got a chance to maybe at least go to the knockout rounds. Yeah. And depending on the group we've got, that is to be fair. Aye. But even at that, I think Europa League next season, if we go to Europa League, I think we could be like Rangers. I think we could get very, very far in it. Yeah, definitely. We're a, we're a solid, solid team. And if we can beat Rangers, who are then going out and being able to beat Borussia Dortmund and all that, yeah. we should be able to be beat, beating Borussia Dortmund and beating potentially Leipzig and even potentially winning the cup. Yeah. So. It is. And it's going to be a massive summer again for. Um, for Celtic and obviously Mark Orwell we talked about it yes in the podcast Ben it's his, Peter Lawwell's son I've heard that you know Peter Lawwell didn't have any you know saying it was Ange that wanted to get him from Man City I think that's a good thing you know Ange taking charge again and picking another backroom staff and I mean I said when Ange came in I was like get everyone out and start afresh and you know he's changed everything you know Gavin Stratton's off the iPad John Kennedy looks in, involved I mean they've cha- he's changed the whole environment at Celtic and I Fair play, what he's going to do, uh, Mark Lawwell. I think he's ahead of recruitment or something like that now, so it's going to be a massive summer for him as well. Um, what do you make of that, Ben? I know we touched on it in the podcast, but Mark Lawwell, do you think he might have a big job task on his hands in the summer? Well, I agree with you. I don't think he was brought in just because he's Peter Lawwell's son. I, yeah. think, I think it's because he's got connections to the city group and because obviously Ange worked with him as well. And yeah. Because <coughs> he worked at Yokohama for, uh, I think that was his last club before Celtic. Aye. But I, I think it could be useful in bringing in players. Definitely. So, Aye. <coughs> obviously, we need a new goalkeeper, a new, a new backup goalkeeper. We need yeah. a new backup left back. Um, another centre mid, I would maybe say. So, yeah. bring in players that are good in those positions. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk about a, a straight. Before we talk about Carter Vickers, he's been called up to the US uh, squad. But before we talk about him, it's a straight. It's probably not true, but I found it last night in Twitter and it was kind of. You know, stop me and I, I, I took a screenshot because I wanted to talk about it today. According to media and Qatar, Celtic have approached um, former, the agent of former Real Madrid star, James Rodriguez. <laughs> I don't know about this. Um, it's the same James Rodriguez? Well, we've t- apparently Celtic have approached the agent. I just imagine that. <laughs> I'm not even kidding on. I would just love to. I would buy a Hamas Rodriguez I mean, I know he's thirty, but he's, he's he was still player uh, Everton when he was there. Still, no, uh, I think he's away to like Abu Dhabi or something. Ah, uh, like something like that. But according to reports, James Hamas wants to re- return to Europe, and the possibility of a say of Champions League football with Celtic may be tempting for the thirty-year-old. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Maybe it's just a rumor out there, but. You know, it is out there. Um, James Rodriguez, um, and he wants to return to Europe. So we'll see how that goes. Talking about Europe, Ben. Champions League game last night. What a game. I thought it was uh, over. <laughs> so did I. So. <laughs> <laughs> I. Honestly, I'm sitting there playing a game of FIFA, and I've because I, I can't watch a match. I've got right. my uh, live score up, and I see that Rodrigo scores in the 90th minute. And I think, right, that's just a little consolidation. Mm. And then my phone buzzes again. <laughs> And one football does this thing where it, it buzzes twice for the same notification. Aye. I don't think it's that. And then I check Snapchat and everything's going off or not. <laughs> then they've just scored two in one minute. Aye. <laughs> so then I watched the penalties um, on some live stream on mm-hmm. Twitch. I don't know how they were able to get it. <laughs> and I, I, well, I tell you, I didn't watch the penalties. I watched Benzema's penalty. Yeah. And honestly, the, the stadium was... <laughs> that's, to be fair, Real Madrid deserved it. If yeah. they, if they, they pull something like that off. Yeah. City auto merchants. Yeah, definitely are. I mean the squad man City has they should be when they went one up at you know, away to Madrid, they should be Kate on off, was it ten to go maybe even less than that? Um mm. and they should be able well able to see Madrid out. Madrid didn't have a shot on target until the ninetieth minute. I mean that's yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. Um well, but I think I, it's gonna be an easy task for oh. El Madrid to beat Liverpool. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure who's going to win, and this could be revenge for Liverpool after twenty eighteen in Kiev. But oh, aye. who knows? Maybe they would. <coughs> maybe they'll get like I don't know whether Malatau to step into Sergio Ramos's boots and beat yep. Mohamed Salah's other <laughs> el- elbow or shoulder or whatever. Um, oh, that final was that the final that Ka- was it? Carius. 
No. Yeah, that was a Carlos oh, final. God. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing now? Is he still goalkeeping? I think he's at Liverpool still. Oof. I think he had uh, a loan at Besiktas, but I don't think Oh, I remember him at uh, Besiktas, I. But there you go but I was talking on Twitter bit, we were talking on Twitter last night after that game and potentially we're going to do a special we're going to do a special podcast for it but if the time comes up and we do have um, the time to do it we will do the a live watch along it depending on is it 28th of May or something like that I think I think it is yeah I think it's around about that time uh, it's a Saturday so I'll see how, we'll see how it goes um, or oh, the, the league that, yeah. the league for Celtic's over but we'll see how it goes If but we'll have a special podcast out for it anyway but uh, we'll try and have a, a watch on because it is going to be uh, some final because it's. Um, I, I felt it was a, I felt if it was going to be an all English final, it'd be a bit boring, you know, because you can see that in the prem. So not every week, but you know, it'd be. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot. I don't know. I know what you mean. With I watched the last, sorry, the one two games ago. It was Liverpool Man City. Uh, it was just kind of back and forth, you know, one was scoring, then the other was scoring, it was kind of, it was exciting, don't get yeah. me wrong, but it was just like, you can watch that any other week, to mm-hmm. be fair. They're going to play each other about two or three times a season, so, yep. watching that again, for their, or for their fans, they'll be happy, but for for me personally, I'd rather uh, get Villarreal or Real Madrid through to play one of the English teams, but Aye. there we go, it did happen. <laughs> it did then, well, I'll be, I don't know who, but... Who are you backing Ben for the final then? Like if you Um supporting Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> but when you look at it, both teams had a comeback. Yeah. In some way. V- uh, Liverpool via Real. Via Real made their comeback and then Liverpool scored three in the second half and put them out. Because <laughs> we were watching that live in the podcast Aye. and stuff, you know. <laughs> and then that happened. Uh, oh. We kinda jinxed that again. I yep. think that's just a usual <laughs> thing. And obviously last night as well with a, probably one of the best comebacks I've ever seen in a Champions League match. Oh, it was brilliant. I I, I, I honestly thought when Man City scored, we had Mario scored. That was it, you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, talking about kind of Europe international news for Carter Vickers, he's been called up by um, the US national team for the series of friendly matches next month. Um, it's a massive well deserved for him because he's been he's literally a a brick, you know, he's not going to get past him. He's like, he, he has an image to me like a American footballer. Like if he if he wasn't a actual footballer, yeah. you give me thoughts yeah. But what have you made him, Ben Jenkins? He's really deserved this call. Oh, definitely. Nah. He, he's been probably the best centre back I've watched all season, and yeah. I've watched a lot of football. Yeah, and um, I think he's not only helped. Like he had a lot of pressure on because obviously the defence last season, Ben, and he's took that way. You know, nothing on him. You know, he's. I think he's helped Starfield. I know Starfield with a like a shaky start but I think he's helped him a lot as well being at the back and, uh, he was actually the one I wondered why we signed him not Starfelt at the time because mm-hmm. I thought we were going to play Starfelt and Chris Julian at the back Aye. So and then he came in and he's literally our best centre back he's just he commands everything through the back mm-hmm. line yep. he knows Joe Hart from Tottenham so they've got a kind of a good relationship when it comes to that uh, obviously Hart likes to play it from the back so mm-hmm. Carter Vickers would know that um, and obviously he's, he's helped out Starfield and he's really, I think he's just really kind of calmed everything down mm-hmm. yeah definitely and well deserved and hopefully everything goes well with him in the US we've got a kind of no break news but we talked about it last kind of podcast and the one before that Ben about CCV trying to get him in a permit they're still continuing talks mm-hmm. there's nothing agreed yet but a deal is likely to on completion, uh, completion of the season so maybe talking another few weeks down the line but it is good news and obviously we talked about last night Jota it's massive news, Ben. If this does come through, Jota to sell to. I mean, the importance of CCV defence is much, in my opinion. I don't know about you, Ben. Important because you know, get a, you'll not. I don't think you'll get a defender like him again. Yeah, I agree with that. You can yeah. get a player who's a lot, who's got the flair mm-hmm. and can dribble. Uh, you can replace him. But Carter Vickers is just one of those players who's. It's be- I think it's because his presence at the back is just so demanding. Yeah, he can. He's. I don't even know how to describe him, he's just unreplaceable, if you know what I mean. Yeah, aye, definitely. Um, and hopefully CCV does get that permanent deal, because he's, as you're talking, if we win the title, Ben, 40 million, or plus the the two, I mean, you, it's not like you can afford this deal, you know, was it 12, how much is it, I don't know, six and a half, seven for CCV, I don't know. 
I think it was something like three million was what we'd originally pay for them, and yeah. then I think it was some uh, six million in add-ons. Ah, ah, yeah. Yeah. But for me as well, Spurs, it looks a lot less likely that they're going to get Champions League. Yeah. They're still in the race for it. Um, I think it's Chelsea, Arsenal, and Spurs are going to. Uh, sorry, I don't think Man United have really got much chance. No, I think they can. I don't think they can get Champions League anymore. I think they're can they not? No, I no, think so. No. Um, well, even West Ham as well. I think they could maybe have a chance of getting it. But yeah. if Tottenham slip up and end up getting Europa League, that could be a major factor because Carter Vickers will one be a starter. Yep. In the Champions League and two be playing Champions League and not Europa League. Yeah, definitely. So, and that'll. And looking at Tottenham as well, they've got Christian Romero, Eric Dyer, um, Davison Sanchez, you know, centre backs that would probably be preferred over him. Personally, in my opinion, I would be playing him starting. Yeah. Prefer, but uh, that's just the way it. So, yeah. Aye, that's it. And hopefully we get them deals all in. I'd, I'd love to see Jota sign, though. I'm not saying he's not a good player, but as we talked about Ed Ben, you know, in the last night and all, but you can get a player out there, it's practically maybe got that talent as well you know somewhere um, but I, I think we've talked about it. I think we just to wrap up the kind of video done in it's obviously a massive weekend for Celtic again Hearts we talked about in the podcast last night Ben how are you going to see it on Saturday is it going to be the same team as we did in the derby or do you want to switch some t- players up I would, I would switch it up to be fair yeah, that yep. out. Um, I would put Jack and Marcus back on yeah. And instead of Kyogo, it's not just because Kyogo hasn't been playing well, but it's because he has. It's just mm. Jack and Marcus was out injured, getting back in, getting some, getting some playing time, getting a, a couple of goals before the end of the season. Um, yeah. Atate definitely off. I'd maybe even try out players like Ishmael Soro mm-hmm. and uh, even Stephen Welsh and stuff like that. Players who haven't really had much of a chance. Mikey Johnson, Chris Julian. Yeah. Uh, give them a bit of time to maybe improve and get back in the team. Because I think even if we don't do it, Mm-hmm. and we play with our strongest squad this week because I think if we win this week we win the league pretty much yeah pretty much uh-huh. uh, I think it's all gold up it's so bad yeah. that time we've pretty much won the league um, so yeah I would maybe even play our, our best squad this week and then switch it up a bit yeah yeah aye. so we'll need to see how it goes um, the team from the derby you know you can't really place your Alston because obviously your aunt which is out injured until I think, the Mullerwell game but there's, you know, I'll just rest him. I wouldn't play him in case he gets, you know, that injury again. So I'd keep Ralston in the team. He's been, he performed all right. Uh, Ralston. He's been, he's been good. It's considering what it was last season, mm-hmm. he was one of the players that everybody wanted to kind of get out the team. And then at pre-season time, he just became our best right back. And then I think it was a bit unfortunate with Iran. Yeah. Just been better than him. Yeah. Uh, obviously, definitely CCV. And as I said, Ben, you can swap out maybe defence Welsh, maybe give him a chance, but. I would start our strongest lineup just to get this tight over the line. I, I just fancy it oh, because yeah, I can I get you here as well. <coughs> It'd be fair to you. Mm-hmm. And obviously Dundee United is on Wednesday night, so you could easily, if the title's finished on Saturday, maybe put a couple of players rested and uh, you know put maybe put in a show with the last game of the season. But you know, just uh, once you get the title wrapped up, you can finally say that's it, champions. You don't you don't need to worry about dropping points anymore. So I think that's the thing for Saturday now. I hope that Atati's dropped because Atati, if he play, I think he's going to. Aye. Honestly, I, he will. I think he'll literally die on the pitch. Man. I think he'll have like a heart attack or something. Honestly, man, he's like, played non-stop since he's joined. As I said last night in the podcast, he must be telling Ange he's fit to play, or else he wouldn't be playing. But mm-hmm. he surely, like, he looked knackered after was it sixty minutes, even less than that, in the derby and obviously Ross County a week before he looked. He, like, he, I, for me, he's looked tired since the. The old firm match where we get beat the cup in um, yeah. the semi final. He's looked very tired since then. He, by his 60 minute mark, he was done. Like, yeah. Literally, he was shattered. And since then, we've played him each week. I think we need to give him at least a week to kind of rest and mm-hmm. recover. Aye. Who would you put in that spot? Would you have. Would you keep a Rayleigh McGregor in that midfield? Yeah, I would. Yeah, they're probably our best. Aye. best two. Um, maybe even change it up a bit with the formation and put another striker in. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Or another, uh, even like an attacking midfielder mm-hmm. or something like that. Uh, you could maybe even try, I know I've said it before, it's not a brilliant, a brilliant combination, but Rogic and O'Reilly. Yeah. Try them out again, see if they, they can get them working together again, because yep. I know they're not a brilliant partnership, but you know, you can then just keep trying until it works. Yeah, and they did that with Rogic and Turnbull at the start of the season, people's like, you know, it's not working, you know, it's not working to get them out of the team. They did. Um, mm-hmm. 
but then they put McGillar again, they're working all right again, you know what I mean? So hopefully that does, if that does go into a scenario, it will work again. But aye, I think that we've kind of talked about everything. If, to wrap up again, Ben, you said, was it 2 0 in the podcast last night, I think? Uh, I think it was 2 0. Yeah. yeah. I said 5, 4 or 5, but I, I'd love that to be up, but yeah, I'll just take a win, you know what I mean? Clean sheet, um, good performance, you know, no injuries, um, and that's it. And when they when they when they Premiership, that's it. I think yeah, basically in goal difference, if nineteen, I think even more now in it. Twenty still, oh, still nineteen. I mean, because we we drew. So no, it's still a massive difference. It is. But. Celtic have scored eighty one goals this season. That is, that is incredible. That's something else. That is, um, and if I search up quickly before we go, uh, Celtic last season. I know it's going to be a massive difference. Last season only scored. If I can get it. Uh, goals, goals, goals. Uh, seventy-eight. Is that right? No, it can't be that right. Can? Uh, I think we've scored a lot more by right. than we did at the end of last season. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've beat the points tally by mile. Celtic last season finished the, well, seventy-seven points. Um, we're already on eighty-six. I mean, that's <laughs> just shows Ange a season. And he's just. I think from February when we beat Rangers at Park at Parkhead, I think that's just changed the whole mindset. I know the whole season we've been going through it, Ben, but I think that, just to touch on before we end the video, I think that's really changed the whole thing at Celtic. They can actually go for the title now because yeah. we we're all for the start of the season. Uh, it's it's just the goals, isn't it? The yeah. goals have pretty much won it for us. I mean, scoring seven at St Johnston was just something else. I think yeah. that kind of really showed. And then you've got these Rangers fans that are going to say, oh, yeah, the reason that they've won is because this is like... They've got a lot of you know, we had a change of manager and this is like the worst Celtic team in a long <laughs> way. It's it's not, it's probably the best Celtic team since the Invincibles in my yep, opinion. Definitely. It's they just need to count themselves on lucky for once. Yeah. Last season we were prepared to bite a bullet and say it was it was our club's fault, but they're too better to admit it. Yeah, definitely. And talking about hearts, Ben, Robbie Nielsen's comments back when Kyogo scored that apparent offside goal, I mean as I said, we've got VR in November, after during the World Cup coming. Yeah. You would need that to sort that. But I mean, that comment that night was too funny because like he had he had chances. Uh, Hearts had chance that game to score, no doubt about it. They hit, hit the post, good saves from Joe Hart. But yeah. it's going to be a tough game because Hearts. I know they've got third place in the hands. They can't lose it now. Um, they've got is it Europa League co- uh, playoffs or something like that. So Philippe Lee Hearts. Um, but I think we've got one of the best keepers in the league yes. as well. And, and he, Craig Gordon. He won player or he Scottish. Won GFA award, yep. did he uh, yeah, he did, yeah. And uh, it'd be fair to him, he earned a percent. Yeah, so definitely. And that's probably one of the biggest mistakes we made under Neil Lennon was letting yep. him go. Definitely. Because it really, I think, even having him in goal last season would have made a massive difference. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying. I, I, when I seen Vasilis Barkas and, like, you know, or he, like, you got to let him have a chance, but like, at least like, I think we were all kind of wondering aye. why we'd signed him. You know, yeah. five million from Athens. You yep. know, it's not, it's not a massive team, is it? Yeah. But buying the and I think we all said that about Kyogo. Maybe not Jack and Magnus because mm-hmm. we knew he scored like twenty-two goals against teams like Ajax and PSV. Uh, but it, you know, it's like a lot of money for a player who might not live up to the potential and well, he's definitely definitely not lived up to anything that he's been given Yeah, uh, he, he's literally probably the first player I'd like especially when you're getting played at left back <laughs> in training matches that's that's when you know you're not yeah um, consideration. <laughs> and it's going to be I think it's going to be tough to let him go, to try and get him go but because I think Celtic will be looking for money I don't know where we're going to get it get back to Athens to be fair to you. Yeah, I, I, I think he could get back there yeah I heard reports that Athens were looking to get him back, but I remember Athens knocking us out, and Barkas was in goal. He pulled off some good saves, but we were terrible that night. But um, so, um, and that's probably how we got him. Probably somebody wrote him down and said, "Oh, I made a couple of good saves." But know. you know, Foster, you know, I would, I'm not saying it's all his fault, but we should have had it planned that you know, if he wasn't going to stay, this is the backup plan. Tell Gordon. You're going to be practically first choice next season because God Foster's probably not going to stay. You know it's that was crazy, but you know like we're positioning our new Ben Thursday fifth of May, Saturday we could potentially win the title back. You know, so there you go. 
Um, and as I say to wrap up the video, no one is expecting this. Wrote off. We're, we wrote off our third place, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, that was. I, I, I don't know, but aye. So that was some. Some people said that, but I think we've wrote off everybody. You know, we've, we've just Alan Brazil and talk sport. <laughs> Um, so many people but aye um, we're on for the title on Saturday with Ben's went 2-0 I'll go 3-0 4 he's a good score St Johnson game would be good 7-0 but I think Hearts will pose a, a better defence they've got a better defence than a goalkeeper obviously so um, we'll see how that goes and aye I think that'll do it thanks to one Ben um, we've talked everything I wanted to do um, aye and I'll see you probably we'll see you after, uh, obviously next week um, yeah. after the Hearts game and hopefully David and all that we'll be back on again for next week so aye I think Dominic as well might be making a guest appearance. Aye, Terry wants to come on as well, so we'll have fun. Terry as well. Aye. Aye, right, so. Aye, I'll see you later, Ben. Hopefully after the the Hearts game we win the title, you'll be be back on. Hopefully we'll be back on here celebrating. Yes, (laughs) with the flags. We'll be in (laughs) the centre by the way, celebrating, that's it. I know, (laughs) I know. (laughs) Bye. Um, See you later. See you later.